Let's get it on. Welcome back to New Heights, ladies and gentlemen, presented by Time Wade out, Sports. And the- You're the one that's going to have to bring the energy today. The f- right. I want to go to a dark room and not have to interact with anybody for three days. Welcome back to New Heights, presented by no, Wade we, Sports and we Entertainment. More, more, more. And- we need we need more and more energy. Come on, you're in the playoffs still. I need more. You're going to be good cop. I'm bad cop today. Good cop. Good cop. I'm the good cop. I know. That's what I'm saying. Hey, I just did my first desk pop. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to New Heights, ladies and gentlemen, presented by Wave Sports and Entertainment and brought to you by the all-new Experience Smart Money debit card, the debit card that builds credit without the debt. That's right. Get you one. We are your host. I'm Travis Kelsey. This is my big brother, Jason Kelsey, out of Cleveland Heights, Ohio. <laughs> Northeast Ohio's finest right here, baby. New episodes drop to you every Wednesday during the NFL season here on New Heights. Uh, subscribe on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. And follow the show on all social media at New Heights Show with one S. And check out our official fan club at NewHeightsShow.com. Um, also with one S. Uh, Jason, why don't you uh, talk to the people, bud? Yeah, we got uh, another huge episode coming up for you guys. Obviously, we're going to react to the uh, wild card weekend uh, of all the games, including ours. Uh, get to some fan mentions. A uh, nice shout out from the Zach Brown band, which Woo! is uh, pretty good. I've been Overnight. a little doppelganger a little bit. And then we're going to talk about some massive coaching changes that are happening around the league. But first, as always. As always. New news! New news! Coming right, in hot to- Player all pros, Jason, yet again, the best center in the National Football League. Hey. Congratulations. Oh, the uh, NFL PA's uh, yeah, the PA all pro one, came out, yeah. which really doesn't mean anything. Then the AP one came out, <laughs> and Jason is still on top as which, the best. Do you think the why do you think the AP one means more than the uh, PA one? Yeah, the PA one they just kind of came up with. Well, but they're voted. So the PA one's voted on by players and coaches, or is it just players? See, this is why it's. I think it's just players. <laughs> Who'd you vote for on it? So I think on the PA one, you're only allowed. I was allowed to vote for uh, defensive tackles, offensive linemen, and linebackers. I think that's what it gave me the opportunity to vote for. If I remember that. Deep DNs, maybe. It only gave. Uh, I was uh, outside backers. That's it? Outside backers. You couldn't yeah. do safeties? Mm mm. It's weird. I think they leave safeties for the uh, QBs. I do like that they limit it to who you're actually playing against, though. Yeah, I respect it. Or or your peers. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, both are cool to be on if you're if you're on both. Uh, <laughs> but if you're just on one, and it's the one that they just kind of made up like yeah. a couple years ago, it's not as cool. <laughs> the AP one, I think, is very unbiased. Guys uh, in the in the league can. I think, I don't know, go with a popularity contest. Well, I, I think that also you, you know, you and I both know you get reputations in the league. And I think guys, you know, you, you think very, very highly of players that have been around for a long time. I think that that's very natural in the NFL. Yeah. And I think the AP usually is a much more subjective uh, to what what's happened in that season. They break they break out production, stats, games played, all that. Yeah, and none of it's perfect. You know, I think uh Frank Ragnow had an incredible year in Detroit. I think really, really highly of Frank. He was the second team all pro in the AP. I don't know where he was in the uh NFL PA one, but you know, you can these awards a lot of times can go to a number of guys. And there's a mm-hmm. lot of guys that are up for it. So it's never perfect in who who gets it, but I do think the AP in general, uh does a good job with theirs because it's so many different media outlets across the country that are kind of voting on it. That's what I was trying to say. Um, But uh, congrats again on, on being first team, dude. Obviously uh, so well-deserving man. I appreciate it. All righty. Well, let's talk about some more awards for you, Trav. You're up for a people's choice award. Fucking nonsense. How about this dude? Look at the company. The big Yeti is in. On the 2024 nominations of the People's Choice Award. Um, look at this list. I don't, Coco. I don't, it's just. Coco Golf. Is that what, how you pronounce that name? I'm not going to lie. I don't know. What did I What did I do to get Athlete of the Year? I yeah, just, Coco Golf. I, I did SNL. LeBron James. Is this only athletes? 
That's I just I'm just now realizing of this. the year. Yeah, that's what this one is. I thought it was the People's athlete. Choice Award. It's the People's athlete Choice. of the year. So there's multiple People's Choice Awards. For no, it's the yeah. There you go. I didn't know that. People's Choice Awards are like what would be like an Oscars or an Emmys. Yeah. There's multiple categories. Nice. Mm-hmm. That's why we do this. You learn. All right. How did how is Simone Biles on this? But her how am I boyfriend is. How is my <laughs> dog? Uh, Owens. I mean, he, he's he's so weird. Playing some good ball over there, I guess. <laughs> yeah, man, this is pretty cool. Ninety two percenters. Uh, let's get this thing rigged. Let's start voting up the Big Yeti for the People's Choice Award uh, Athlete of the Year. If you didn't know that there was different segments, we just covered that. Uh, fans can vote once per day from now until January nineteenth at eleven fifty nine p.m. And fans fans decide who win this. Who wins this? Well, that's why it's it's the people's choice. The people decide. <laughs> it all makes so much sense when you put it like that. <laughs> so yeah, let's put a link in this. I don't know where the link is, but let's get a link in there and uh, make sure you click that thing and vote for the Big Yeti. I won an award, Jason. Jason gets nominated and. Sexiest man of the year, first team AP All Pro. But I'm not the people's sexiest man of the year. If it's a democratic process, I'm not getting sexiest man of the year. <laughs> That's like one person's opinion that just got it swift. <laughs> There's no fucking way. All right, before we get to wild card weekend, it's time now to talk about our partner. Prize picks. That's right. Prize picks is the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. All you have to do is select two or more players, pick more or less on their projected stats, and place your entry. Plus, prize picks offers weekly promotions that can lead to big payouts, like Taco Tuesday. Tuesday, prize picks discounts select player projections up to 25% off to provide even more value. And prize picks now offers Apple Pay. For quick and easy deposits into your account this football season. All righty, and now for this portion of the ad read labeled personal experience to be read by talent outside of Travis and Jason Kelsey because we are active NFL players and cannot participate. But you know who can? That's right. Brandon. Come hey, on. Andrew and Brandon. Come on down. Hi, everybody. Uh, let's, uh, what do you got for your, uh, don't tell us. We can't tell. I can't don't tell, tell us you. anything. Yeah. Don't You're tell us anything. We know You're nothing. Give us a we, sign. We are you, are you know here? Nothing. You're here. We're, Where are you? We right? finished. We finished right about here this week. It was kind of a wild weekend. We did all right. All right. We did all right. Get out Anyways, of here. See you later. Skedaddle. Oh my shoulder. Don't you yell at me like that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Love you. <laughs> Quick picks for the week. Uh, I really, really, really am going to go with uh, Jared Goff and Baker. I think it's going to be a shootout. I think CMC coming off a bit of rest is really, really good for rush yards. And I think a sneaky rush yards pick. Patty Mahomes. Uh, that man is going to keep a play alive no matter what happens to his helmet. I'm going to get out of here. Get the guys back in here. <laughs> Got him. Hey. All right. Now, well, hopefully, Brandon, did you guys write? As uh, most interns do, you know, they're just always right there for you at all times. And if you want to start making picks, go to prizepicks.com slash new heights and use the code. You got it. New heights for a first deposit match up to a hundred dollars. Again, that's prizepicks.com slash new heights code new heights for a de- first deposit match up to one hundred dollars. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Yeah, that was fun. OK, let's uh, move on to uh, some football. How about that? Yeah, yeah let's, let's get right get into it. it. Chiefs. Dolphins, man, that was a fun game to watch, Trav. That was cold as fuck. It looked like it. We're going to get to it. Chiefs, 26, Dolphins, 7. Um, you talked about it. I think everybody saw it. It's, Dude, it is it is fun to watch when it is just, the, when the elements are that absurd. It's, it's fun to watch. How was it playing in it? It was shocking how yeah. cold it was. Um, and it wasn't like... Cause you're you're in this the you're by the heaters you're by the you're in the locker room then when you go out on the field it's like the temperature just f- drops right now and you feel it in your hands you feel it in your toes your face like everyone saw Coach Reed's stash like I could feel my mustache hardening up 
it was shocking how cold it was. And um, that, that was probably the first game I'd ever caught myself, like even during a drive, like if I got taken out for a play, like running over to the heaters to like warm up my hands and my my like feet to try and get feeling back. Like it was that freaking cold. Yeah, let's, we're going to get right to the cold portion. Uh, it was the fourth coldest game in NFL history with a negative 27 degree wind chill. Uh, the, the temperature just ambient was negative four. It was incredible. What what were guys doing to combat? So, were you guys using uh, hand warmers, feet warmers? I know some guys that uh, they use some heat warmers on their on their hands and or on, in the pockets. Did anyone put their, them in, in their, their shoes? shoes? Did people some, put them in? Yeah, dude, that's and when they, you they know don't it's always, cold. They all they also that can backfire, you know. In what way? It can burn you. I'm not going to say who it was, but one of the guys ended up putting uh, double socked it up. Double socked, okay. Foot warmer on top, and then inside the shoe, and then spatted his shoe. Okay. So you got pressure kind of pushing down on it. Ended up getting like himself? two golf size blisters Burns. on the top of his feet. Ooh. Yeah. It was just like looking at it, I was like, damn, dude, that had to hurt the entire fucking game. Did you not feel it? Right. <laughs> I mean, he probably didn't. He couldn't feel his feet. Exactly. Did <laughs> it was dude is nuts. Did anybody do the uh, latex glove underneath the football gloves? I've heard that people have done that before. Yeah, and I've actually done that before, and I've never. Wouldn't do it again. No, nah, because it kind of slides. The gloves slide around a little bit more. I feel nice. like. You know what else I've heard people do? Uh, I forget. It was somebody that was in Seattle. Cayenne pepper in your socks. Have you ever heard of that? Apparently, it heats up your feet. I don't that know, sounds man. like old wives tale doesn't it <laughs> it does all the defensive players were one. layering on the vaseline yeah everybody yeah. yeah vaseline at that point ain't working <laughs> don't matter did you sit on the heated benches yeah the heaters the heaters were really the only thing <laughs> I, said, I made sure i got i kept them hammies warm kept them glutes firing yeah yeah gotta stay gotta stay loose loose as possible when the wind wasn't blowing Versus when the wind was blowing, what was the was it like? It was ridiculous. So it was so cold, you really didn't even didn't even feel notice. That. No, yeah, it was just cold. At that point, it's just like yeah, yeah. you're frozen. You're in and, it. Yeah, it was almost like it was so cold, the wind just like never touched you. It just kept, <laughs> just slid right past your icy face. It was nuts, man. Well, let's get to some images from this. Let's let's for people that maybe didn't watch the game, let's get to some images to show just how cold it was. Here's a clip of a, a water bottle that uh, froze in the middle of the game, I think. Oh, yeah. Beers beers, and... Uh, I hope I can't open up TikTok because I don't have TikTok. Beers, <laughs> beers so and uh, watch water bottles. Clip. Beers and water bottles were freezing. I saw, I saw, I've seen a few clips. Those mountains were blue, huh? Which makes sense. It makes sense. You, uh, you put a beer in negative 40 degree temperature. weather. Yeah. yeah. It adds up. Look at Andy's mustache. I think this was the thing that probably got the most. I mean, how did he even get wet enough to turn into a full icicle? <laughs> like, it's just. I don't know. He's got a mustache well, I've, I've, icicle I've, I've, on his lip. <laughs> and think, he's just chilling with think, it. Like, he's just I heard, in it. Uh, I heard my guy Creed Humphrey uh, told me a story today. He said, uh, "Coach Reed came over to him after uh, after a drive and kind of motivated him to, you know, keep doing what we were doing." Yeah. And Creed looks at Coach and he's like, "Coach, you got something on your uh, on your mustache?" And he says, "Yeah, I know I do. This isn't a beauty pageant; it's a football game." <laughs> <laughs> it's the proper way to answer that question. Big Red, yeah. Don't you worry about this. Yeah, that is literally an icicle. He has an uh, yeah. in. It's not even like, like off the it's like side just of the like house. a little bit. Like, like off of, off of the gutter as a kid, just Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't know how there was enough moisture for the whole thing to become that. That's what is the most confusing. <laughs> that, boy, that boy's <laughs> nose was leaking, man. Yeah. This shit was running. We got some nice comparisons. Tell me if you can spot the difference between these ones. We got we got Andy right here, and then we got take a look at this guy. If, see if you can spot the oh difference. Oh my gosh. How does how does that icicles. even happen? Right now, now that is now those are icicles. That's yeah. impressive. And then of course his patented comparison, the big red walrus. <laughs> Dude, that's so good. That's actually a pretty clean cut walrus right there. It's impressive. It is. I've that's, seen some worse walrus. Like an AI. Is that a real walrus or is this an AI walrus? Rawr? Rawr? 
That's a real one. It's a good looking walrus. With the, the groomer. And lastly, uh, with the cold weather, well, I guess I still want to talk about the field. What did the field feel like? Because it looked at certain parts, especially the closer it was to the sideline, that it was just like rock hard. Yeah. No, it was 100% rock hard. Once you got to the white on the yeah. sidelines, both in out of the end zone, both sidelines. Yes, 1,000%. It looked like it. It looked hard on the uh, edges of the field. Yeah, no, it was it was hard. And, uh, and you know, the, the coils, we obviously, uh, they made... Yeah, the heaters underneath? Yeah, they... Uh, they did a little segment on the coils and the new technology we have at Arrowhead, where we've had it at Arrowhead for about, I think, like five or six years now, where they put the coils underneath the, the field and kind of heat the field up. Right. Didn't notice them. Didn't, yeah. <laughs> I can only imagine what that field would have been like without them. Well, you probably but, wouldn't have been able to play. Like, you would yeah. have been literally just frozen. Yeah, it would have been crazy. The, uh, yeah. There's there's certain parts of the field where the I don't know if it's just the way the wind hits the stadium or whatnot. It was colder, um, it was icier. But other than that, I mean, you knew that it was going to be hard when you hit the ground, regardless. So we also saw Pat's helmet take a chunk Dude, out of it. Absolutely was, uh, fighting to get in the end zone. Yeah, that was wild. That was ridiculous. I had never seen that ever in my life. I'm looking at this guy telling me the play, and I'm Ow. like looking through his helmet at his like the the skin on his head and i'm just like that. <laughs> you're not allowed to play with this <laughs> you're not <laughs> they let him do one more play after that right i think two dude i think they i think he got away with two of them yeah then they whistled in for the next one and you know when that new helmet comes in it's so awkward never fits right chin straps always off think about this your helmet you were talking about last week how your helmet like you kind of put it on the floor mat so it heats up exactly that <laughs> That was thing, rock that hard. Thing was rock hard. Didn't sitting in a properly. bag behind all the heat. Yeah, it was like, and he didn't even strap it up because he like couldn't get it strapped <laughs> up. Strap. And they did a blitz zero, and he took a shot. I was like, that helmet is popping off. There's no way that's still on his head. Gosh, oh, I gotta love it, man. Patty Mahomes, man, warrior, fucking warrior. Well, the Chiefs' offense and Patrick Mahomes showed up. The offense totaled 408 total yards in the game. Rookie Rasheed Rice had another breakout performance in his rookie playoff debut. She finished the night with eight receptions for 130 yards and a touchdown. Pat was asked about Rasheed's big night. Some of these guys hit that rookie wall, and it seems like he just kind of pushed right through it. Uh, and he's just continued to get better and better, and he's such a great player. Yeah, what do you think has allowed him? I feel like he has been utilized more later. In the, I feel like earlier in the season he was kind of still figuring it out, right? And maybe that's why that rookie wall hasn't really hit in. It seems like he's in full force right now. What do you think, Trav? He's playing with a lot of confidence, man, and um, making some huge, huge plays for us. You know, early on, uh, you just want to see a guy make strides and, and, and have confidence and playing fast. So you don't want to throw too much at him. I remember as a rookie, it was like I was learning a new language, right? It was it was a whole new like, and then on top of that i had to feel confident with what i was seeing in the defense across me so it's just you get a lot of stuff thrown at you and that's where that rookie wall can can really hit you no doubt it just seems like chaos for the first 10 weeks of the season um i think coach reed and coach nagy and the offensive staff have done a great job of just kind of like slowly building on the 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 things we have in the offense form and on top of that he's done a great job of just understanding you know, what the guys are teaching, um, how coach likes things ran, how Pat uh, feels comfortable with things being run. And he's just kind of, you know, he's turning into his own right now, man. And it's, uh, it's fun to see him, you know, it's fun to play with him uh, when he's doing all this shit, man. Well, he's certainly coming into his own. It's been awesome for your guys' offense. You know, you guys really needed that one extra guy on the outside to really open things up. And boy, has uh, Rasheed really stepped up. Big Yeti finished the game with seven receptions for 71 yards. Big day for the Big Yeti. Isaiah Pacheco, 89 yards in the rushing touchdown. Pop. And Pat, of course, had a had a record night as well. 262 yards, a touchdown, and uh, with his two big runs for 28 yards and 13 yards each, Pat made Chiefs history. He officially passed running back Marcus Allen for the most career postseason rushing yards in franchise history. That's crazy. Oh, shit. That's nuts. That's nuts. I would have thought Damian Williams had it. But uh, I guess I think we only had him for two playoff runs, so that uh, yeah. that kind of makes sense. But damn, Patty Mahomes out here sh wheeling a deal, <laughs> He's getting loose in the postseason, breaking helmets, just trucking, <laughs> yeah, 
dude lower by the way his head. He's, he's got a that's like a it's like a weapon of war you know what i mean like that's like an antique at this point like that thing is you'll remember that helmet forever he's got to get that thing like dipped in gold yeah it's a collector's item that thing's worth that almost as much as your rookie card is <laughs> <laughs> and that right. fucking rookie card and whoever Let's... the fuck put that as my rookie card fuck you respectively i don't right. know you right. like right. that all right sorry and lastly to round out this uh complete offensive performance kicker harrison bucker had himself another big game he was perfect four for four on field goals and set a franchise record for most field goals made in a single postseason game harry <laughs> georgia technical institution is that where he went yeah. Nice. Georgia. Harrison. What a guy, man. He just he absolutely pounds the freaking ball through the through the uprights, man. I, I love it. He butt kicks it. I told he I think he I think he had a few uh he had a few bruises from uh this past game. A few what? Kicking the ball kicking the ball off and uh those field goals from it being so fucking from cold. The ball being so hard? Yeah. Oh wow. <laughs> it's definitely definitely gotta be a little sore. Yeah. For sure. Well, the offense wasn't the only thing that showed up. The defense has showed up all year, and it showed up in the first postseason uh, postseason game. Stone Cold defense, the KC defense, came to play, holding Dolphins to just seven points and 76 yards rushing the entire game. They also had two sacks and an interception. Um, the Dolphins were scoreless on 10 of 11 drives. One of the most explosive offenses in the NFL, which just goes to show how great this Kansas City defense is. I mean, these guys – almost broke the NFL record at one point this year for most of the points in a single game uh, back earlier. I forget who they were playing. Was it the Broncos? I think they were playing the Broncos. Yeah, right? it was the Broncos. But not on the Chiefs D. Didn't allow a single run over 10 yards. Miami also converted only one of 12 of the th third down situations. Uh, after the game, Chris Jones was interviewed by NFL Network and found out during the interview he only was credited for half a sack alongside George Karloftis, and he was a little upset. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I remember gosh. what sack this was. Oh, my God. I'm so sick of them doing that. I'm going to tell you right now, this is the third time that they gave this guy half of my <laughs> sack. Stop it. I was there. I had him wrapped up. It's my sack. I would go ahead and listen to Chris Jones, who's ever uh, recording those stats, uh, unless you want a pissed off large human being that uh, is really good at sacking people. My dog, my dog George Karloftis is out here getting after the QB too, though. I think he had one and a half sacks. I think they gave him a half a sack, but he had a, he had one of his own as well. So he actually at least had one. George, George did, for sure. George for sure. He had one and a half because they. Well, he had one. Don't you don't want Chris mad at you? you know? <laughs> Well, I'm just saying what you they're giving can't have Chris Matt at the show. He's a friend of the show. That's a good point. LeBron's stat of the game, Patrick Mahomes is tied with Tom Brady for the most quarterback playoff wins uh, before turning 30 ever with uh, 12. So oh, one shit. more and he'll hold that record. <laughs> Ellie is losing her mind up there. Ellie, are you okay? Hopefully she's all right. Yeah, I mean, this is standard. She's a trooper. Why? I probably took one of her toys or something. Like Ellie? Thief. Ellie, she's moved on. LeBron stead before 30. All right. Well, oh, gosh. That's nice to know. It's time to shout out our next sponsor, Buffalo Wild Wings. That's right. B-dubs, baby. Jason, uh, you're a big B-dubs guy. Have you heard about Buffalo Wild Wings Tuesday and Thursday BOGO deals? I had not heard that news, Trav, but now I know exactly what I'm doing on Tuesdays and Thursdays. On Tuesdays, you can get buy one and get half off traditional wings. And on Thursdays, you can get buy one, get one free boneless wings. So that's, uh, that, how about that? That's a lot more wings for you and your buddies, two days a week. Trav, are you uh, more into the traditional wings or boneless? You know I'm a traditional wing guy. I'm really, I'm not even a flat guy, though. I like the drum. Yeah. If we're being honest, we've been over this before. There's no such thing as a boneless wing. It's false advertising, but I'll allow it because <laughs> Buffalo Wild Wings is phenomenal. Well, make sure you get the Buffalo Wild Wings on Tuesdays and Thursdays for the BOGO Wangs. Let's go sports bar. B-Dub's BOGO deals are available at participating locations. Check the website or app for details. All right, we need to shout out one of our sponsors that you probably see us drinking all the time, and that's because we are addicted to caffeine, and not just any <laughs> caffeine. Accelerator Active Energy, baby. All right, now, natural caffeine, ladies and gentlemen. It's officially the new year, 92 mm -hmm. percenters. So if you've been looking for ways to accelerate your fitness in 2024, 
Look no further than Accelerator Active Energy Drake. Jason, what flavor are you over there sipping on? Cherry ice pop. sipping on, my Ooh, cherry it's ice popping the, it, huh? Yep, that's been you the flavor of the choice for a while. Pop. Accelerator Active Energy has zero sugar. Gives you sustained energy, gets your metabolism going, and gives you the enhanced focus you need to accomplish anything, like maybe play in an NFL football game or take care of three kids and two Irish wolfhounds. All right, now, plus there's also nothing like those signature plant-based thermogenics that give you the energy you need to record a podcast each and every week. Even in the playoffs, ladies and gentlemen, we don't take weeks off. We don't. Start the new year off right, 92 percenters, and get your hands on some Accelerator Active Energy Drink. Available on Amazon, Meyer, Quick Trip, and Giant Eagle. Bucks 32, Eagles 9. Oh, gosh. All right, bummer. We have to uh we have to talk about it, dude. Eagles, uh Eagles season comes to a close in Tampa. Initial yeah. thoughts on the game now that it's over? Uh, you know, it was how the season ended. You know, we just frustrating, uh, especially offensively, just Really stalled out at the end of the year. Um, you know, a lot of blitz, zero, a lot of pressure. And, you know, we just couldn't really execute. So it's frustrating, really, really frustrating. Um, you know, I love everybody in that building, all the teammates, all of those coaches so much. And you put a lot of hard work in, you really do. And, um, you know, it's when it doesn't pan out and when it, you know, it's a heck of a collapse. You know, we started out 10 and one and finish losing six, losing yeah, six of our last seven games. That's tough, man. Yeah, man. It's a, it's, it's a rough, uh, rough way to finish her out uh, this year. Yeah. I think it's, uh, it's pretty easy to underestimate how hard it is to sustain success in the national football league, man. For sure. Things happen uh, with injuries and things, whatever it may be. Coaching changes, uh, guys in and out, not everybody being available every single week. You're always trying to grow. Um, it's uh, it's a lot easier said than done, man. I'll tell you what, man. You guys got a lot of people that uh, are a lot of guys on that team that everybody everybody loves, you know. Yeah. And um, it was just tough to watch uh, watch you guys go down like that last night. Well, you know, hey, listen, you got to give credit to the Bucks, uh, Todd Bowles. I mean. He's one of the best defensive coordinators, uh, defensive play callers in the league, and he was on his game. I mean, they were dialing him up from all over the place. Clearly, they were trying to take away the run game. They were playing six-man fronts, basically goal-line defenses, and uh, really overstacking everything, making it difficult. And, you know, just could not – couldn't execute against it. And, uh, you know, I think uh, it's a frustrating feeling in a game when you feel like you're – you know, you, just can't get it going. You're trying to, you're doing everything you can and just feels like nothing's really working. So one of those days. I hear you, brother. Definitely been there before, man. Lane uh, is in quotes saying a uh, pretty uh, heart wrenching uh, quote after the game. Um, it's very embarrassing when you go from 10 and one to losing the last six or seven or whatever we did. We've done uh, all the press conferences. We've done all the explaining, tried to get it corrected. Uh, there's probably going to be some changes it's frustrating. That's the way the league works, you know. I mean, expectations were a lot more than what ended up happening. You know, the bottom line is we nobody was good enough this year down the stretch. You know, I wasn't. Players weren't. You know, it's just coaches weren't. It's it's collective. Whenever there's that big of a letdown, it's it's more than just any one person or one thing. So it's always you know it's frustrating to say the least. Devante uh, mentioned that in his post game interview, that first, uh, that first third and two, um, yeah, it was just a communication issue here and there. And honestly, in big time games, when you have little stuff like this happen, and it can just, it can be huge plays for you, and just daggering things, and just not give you the momentum you need to even get back out there and do, it, get it right, you know? Yeah, yeah. But he's in uh, in quotes saying it was two different signals that uh, that Jalen checked to him and Dallas Goddard, and uh, we saw one. And didn't see the other. And it's little stuff like that, man, that you you try and harp on all week to, you know, overemphasize communication and and do the things like that, 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 you know, so you avoid this situation in the game. But obviously being on the road and being in the the heat of the game, man, um, you know, sometimes things like this happen. It just sucks that it happened on a big game. Yeah. I mean, that was one play. You know, there are a lot of other issues. Emotional ending, dude. I think everybody – 
in the football world felt this one, man. Clearly uh, a lot of motion at the end of this game for, for you guys, but I can, I can attest for it because I was, I was feeling it. I know Kylie, mom, dad, everybody that was at the game was feeling it. And I know uh, all the friends and family that I got texts from that, uh, that wanted me to tell you they reached out. Uh, yeah. They were all feeling it, man. And um, it kind of started when you went up to uh, Stoutland. Stout? Here. Yeah, he gave him a big old hug. I feel like Stout and I have been hugging it out at the end of every season for the past three years now. Uh, but, you know, it's, uh, you know, guy means a lot to me and we've been through a lot of battles together and um you know there's no chance i'd be where i'm at without just stoutland and uh you know he's he's really allowed me to flourish with my strengths and to a certain extent mask my weaknesses for a long portion of my career uh which has allowed me to play and execute at a high level so um and he's taught me so much about the game so much about life the guy's passion is unbelievable so, uh, you know, whenever, you know, I, I realize that, you know, it could be potentially one of the, the last times I get to do that with him. I just, you know, really want to make sure that he knows how much I appreciate him. Yeah. Didn't want to do get emotional, you know, but uh, you know, what can you do? You can't help it, man. You can't <laughs> help it, man. Are you kidding me? Yeah. You're Kelsey. <laughs> the, uh, any, um, any final thoughts on this thing? Yeah. You know, I don't know. We got exit interviews tomorrow, I guess. Maybe we'll talk about that here in a little bit about what um, I guess what the NFL is like once their season's over. But, um, you know, I don't know, you know, what, you know, next year is going to look like uh, with the team and, you know, coaches, players. Obviously, like Lane said, there's going to be some changes for sure. Um, but, you know, I just, and, you know, just want to make sure everybody knows how much I, love and respect and appreciate uh, the effort and energy that they put into the year. I know the outcome Philadelphia was, uh, you know, not, uh, not acceptable. Um, but I love each and every person in that room and I'll always believe in them. I, you know, maybe I just feel like that's, I don't know. I'll always go to battle with each and every one of you. So, um, so it makes you a great leader, man. In the post game, a couple of guys uh, did answer the question about their future. Brandon Graham was asked if he would be back next year. If the Eagles will have me back next year, will be my uh, farewell tour. Uh, Lane also, uh, Lane Johnson also said he'd be back next year. Lane, I think I have a few good years left. I didn't announce what I was doing on purpose, um, despite I guess what's been leaked to the media. Yeah, but you know, I think there's a lot of you know, people can kind of feel body language and stuff. You know, you, I just don't think you're in a position after a game like that to really, you know, make that decision. I just don't. There's too much emotion in the moment. There's too much going down in the moment to really fully grasp that decision. I'm not trying to be dramatic and continue to draw this thing out. I'm really not. Yeah. It's just something that I think, uh, you know, when it's time to officially announce, you know, what's happening in the future, uh, it'll be done in a, in, in a way that's, you know, definitive and, and pays respect to a lot of people and uh, individuals that have meant a lot to me and, uh, you know, what, um, uh, you know, has led to the career I've had. And, um, you know, I don't think that it would be uh, respectful or even accurate uh, to be able to do that right after a game like that. Yeah. You know, frustrated, I guess, at kind of everything that's happening, but in the future, there'll be something said, I guess. But I did address the team and pretty much said the same thing that I just said to you, which is, you know, I got belief in every single one of you guys, you know, cherish the moment you have in this league. Um, you know, so, you know, yeah, I think, uh, kind of the way it went down and um you know a lot of guys like you know if that is your last game i feel sorry for you and i'm like you know, don't feel sorry for me motherfuckers <laughs> i had a fucking <laughs> hell yeah brother hell yeah man 
Well, either way, um, yeah, I just, you know, think, uh, you know, I truly appreciated everybody in that room and, uh, you know, go to war with them any day of the week and enjoy the time you got. But, um, yeah, I think, uh, there was a lot of emotion in the room for sure. Um, so I don't know what the future, uh, you know, holds for anybody in that building right now. Uh, we're about to get into, I guess, what happens uh, down the stretch, but we got exit interviews tomorrow. I guess I'll just start explaining it, right? Yeah. Um, and we'll all be at the edge of our fucking seat waiting on what decision <laughs> <laughs> you end up making, well, big guy. Yeah. I promise you that. But yeah, why don't you tell everybody uh, in, in football terms what uh, what exactly happens? So tomorrow uh, we'll have our exit interviews. The season's over. Uh, you'll have meetings with your the first Nick will address the team and there'll be a team meeting and uh, the coaches will all talk and you'll talk to each of your position coaches. Uh, you'll do your exit physicals, make sure that you're cleared or if you're not cleared, what is still hurt, talk to the strength coaches. Uh, you'll turn your iPads into the, the video department. iPads, uh, playbooks, whichever playbooks, one you're using. All that stuff. Is there anything else I'm missing? No, that's pretty much how it goes. Some guys that know they're not coming back will clean lockers out. You'll see people start to pack some things up. Yeah. Sometimes a general manager will want to talk with specific guys that either have contracts up or just want to uh, gauge their thoughts on the season. So, yeah, a lot of that's going to take place tomorrow. Um, and it'll be another probably emotional day. Um so yeah, we'll see what what unfolds tomorrow. Yeah, I hear you, man. And uh, every single player in the National Football League has been through those. If you're lucky enough to get to them, to be honest, yeah. <laughs> let's talk some uh, other NFL storylines. Maybe some uh, happier ones. Maybe all right. Yeah, let's do that. Let's get in some player insights around the NFL storyline. Let's get this. Uh, let's pick this energy up. I'm with you. Let's get some thoughts on the other wild card weekend uh, game starting. Uh, with the Browns and Texans game in Houston, I'm not going to lie, man. Um, I expected the Browns to win this game. Yeah. Um, I thought that they entered the postseason with a lot of energy. Joe Flacco was slanging it. Uh, yeah. I felt like the Texans kind of <laughs> snuck in there a little bit. Uh, but they man, got good this, energy, man. This was one side. Got brother. them boys. Holy cow. D'Amico's got this wasn't even around, close. Man. Uh, the Browns started out with a couple good drives early, yeah. uh, but the Texans, I mean, it was just like relentless. And then they had the two pick sixes uh, that really, I mean, that's when it, well, one of them was a pick six or were they both pick sixes? Uh, I think one of them was, I don't remember them both being. All right. One was, one was just uh, a pick in their own zone, right? Oh no, they were two back to two back to back pick sixes. It was? So, yeah. They were literally yeah. back to back touch. That's there. what I thought. Yeah. CJ Stroud, how about we were just talking about uh, Rasheed Rice and the rookie wall? Oh my gosh, slinging it, man! Heck of a rookie year, two hundred and seventy-four yards and three touchdowns. Uh, he's the youngest starting quarterback to win a playoff game since nineteen fifty. <laughs> it's crazy. I didn't even know they're keeping that kind of stat back then. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Fuck. Now I want to know who it is. That's a good question. Is it Bart Starr? Who played in the 50s? <laughs> Fucking Roger Starback. I will say this, man. He is playing fast football. Like, he is making he is. decisions very quick. And he's quick not making, And getting like, the ball out. Because we're, we're going to get to the Packers game in a second. But the thing that's so impressive with CJ, he's not just hitting, like, wide open receivers. No, these are Like, I'm not trying great to knock. Ball. Jordan Love was very, very good. I'm not knocking he's been, Jordan He's Love. been slinging. He Jordan was fantastic. Been slinging it too, yeah. But CJ, I mean, dude, he's throwing balls over the middle – like into tight windows. He's making great decisions. Uh, it's been really, really impressive watching CJ Stroud. And I get, you know, I don't, I guess when you're playing, you don't get to watch all these games. This is really the first game I've really got to sat and watch the entire thing with CJ. Um, it was really, really impressive the way he, uh, he went about his uh, business. I mean, it was, it was a really impressive win by the, by the Houston Texans, but I'm sad. I really am. I'm, I'm, I'm we're brownies at heart because we're we from are. Cleveland. We are. We can't help ourselves. Um, and I'm a Joe flacco E at heart uh, <laughs> because uh, my man was – it was it was like a Cinderella story there for a little bit. 
with the old vet. Um, but you know, it was a good run while it lasted. Um, yeah, it was fun while and, it lasted. You know, baby. I don't, I don't think anybody anticipated. If you rewind the tape to when they signed Joe Flacco out of retirement, which I guess he wasn't retired, but out of free agency, uh, what six weeks left or whenever that happened. I don't think anybody anticipated the Browns being in this position with the expectation to go into Houston and win that game. And uh, it just seemed like everything was trending the right direction. And if I, if I know Cleveland, Cleveland's Cleveland's given them a standing ovation for giving them something they didn't necessarily see coming. So for sure. Well, I would think. And then the other impressive performance from the game, which, you know, I think, uh, rightfully got talked about was the Tunsil miles Garrett matchup because miles has just wreaked havoc on everybody this year. Yeah, and uh, that's what he does Laramie Tunsil by and large, I would say a very under, you know, I mean, people know who he is, I think, but I don't think people really realize how great of a pass blocker he is. I feel like when you talk about the best tackles in the game, the other, like you hear Lane Johnson, Trent Williams, uh, Sewell up in Detroit is getting his flowers now. Uh, Darisaw in Minnesota. I think people kind of caught on to his rookie year. For some reason, Laramie isn't a name that I see thrown out there as much. Maybe that's because the Texans just haven't been very good since when he's been there, I guess, hmm. if that's fair to say. But, dude, this guy has been lights out for a number of years as a pass blocker. And it was on – I mean, he was doing his thing out there. And it was – not only on Garrett, but he had the big uh, block on the screen early in the uh, uh, game. Uh, they had like a fake uh, throwback screen to the wide receiver, and he was out front, made the key block for that touchdown. Um, he really, really had an outstanding day, it looked like. No, that was a huge matchup. Obviously, Garrett's he's the game wrecker. So if you slow him down, you don't give him a chance to wreck it. I mean, <laughs> you're putting he your team in the chance. best fucking position to win, yeah. Let's get into some Cowboys Packers, man. How about the Dallas Cowboys? Fuck. Actually, no, let me rephrase that. How about the how about the Green Bay Packers, man? Green Bay Packers going into a hostile environment and yeah. looking like they knew they were going to go in there and just put up a 40 ball on them, man. I mean, took the ball. It's they, they won the toss and chose to receive. You don't see that very often anymore. No. Pretty much everybody now defers. So they wanted to get out to a fast start and boy did they that's crazy man yeah it was odd watching because I, you know, I, listen i know eagles and, and and cowboys have a lot of feud between them but i got a lot of respect for a lot of guys on that team and the way they play their d-line is is very very good uh dan quinn is a phenomenal coordinator but man the packers were just it felt like anything they did was just wide. I don't, it, was it, was, it was weird. <laughs> Guys like, were running. This is what I mean. Like, no one listen, Jordan ten yards close. Even Jordan Love played them. great, but these dudes are wide. I, it, it was insane how open everybody was. Yeah, and like they talked about before the game about. I guess there's no tells from this Green Bay offense of what Matt Lafleur is doing uh, between the play actions and the runs and everything is married up. I guess that well, you saw a couple of them were just busted. I mean, where there was one in particular where Gilmore was a man, and like it just so happened right when he looked back, uh, I don't think it was the tight. I forget who it was, but they br uh, broke back out uh, the same way they were. They yeah, just I were think coming. it was Dobbs. I think it was Dobbs. Dobbs. Yeah, that's right. And um, eighty-seven. All right. It's like just like perfect time. It was just one of those games where I feel like everything they called, everything they did, you know. Work to perfection. So offense I mean, and defense, everything. In the well, the defense played really well in the first half. Dak and them started getting it going a little bit towards yeah. the end of the half and in the second half. But I mean, it was just there was no way they were catching up to them at that point. It was already, I think, a three score game once they started getting some momentum. But yeah, it was very very dominant performance by the Green Bay Packers in the hardest stadium to get a win in over the past two years. I mean, Dallas didn't lose a single game at home in Jerry world this year. And you could see the shock. I mean, throughout permeate throughout the entire stadium. I yeah. Mean, not, not just the fans. You can see it. You can Jerry's feel face. the shock in the world, dude. Everybody was, was like, I don't what? think anybody anticipated that game. It was, unfolding it was the, that way. It was the first time uh, a seven seed has won uh, since the playoffs expanded to 14, to teams. seven teams. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's a LeBron stat. Um, this was also the uh, Cowboys' first loss at home all season. 
I think I saw a stat saying that Green Bay has more wins in Dallas over like the past like 20 years or something like that in the playoffs. Because Aaron Rodgers was beating Tony Romo. I mean, that sounds right. It was something like that. I bet that's true. Which is crazy. But the Cowboys only have four playoff uh, wins. That's right. Only four playoff wins uh, since 1996. The team is talking a lot, taking a lot of criticism right now after this performance and the high expectation uh, for this season. Yeah. Which fans are always right to be frustrated, um, especially in a situation like this. Not a good ending for the NFC East. I mean, both us and the Cowboys getting blown out in our playoff games. Um, you know, I think everybody thought highly of the NFC East coming to the season with the way it unfolded last year. Cowboys are trending right. The Giants are trending, and it's just uh, didn't unfold that way. Um, yeah. So it'll be interesting to see what happens uh, down there in Dallas. Yeah. The old Jerry Jones in quotes saying, "I'm floored." Yeah. You could tell. There was a lot of shock on his face in the middle of the game. I think uh, everybody saw that. I think, I mean, it was just like, ah. It was like everything that was happening was just like, ah, another one. Damn, he's wide ass open. <laughs> and I thought, like, in my head, I I saw how many yards and how many times guys were wide open. And in my head, I'm just like, Jordan loves like 30 for 35 right now with like four tubs. He only had 16 completions. No, they ran. The they were just so the wide open that it felt like, like they were throwing it all game long. And this is what, you know, I mean, listen, when you run the ball that effectively, dude, uh, it just opens up so much more. Aaron stuff, Jones, especially in that back there, style of offense, because LaFleur comes from the Shanahan tree and like all, all of that stuff. If you can't stop the run, it's just inevitable that all that other stuff is going to be open. And it's, uh, you know, Aaron Jones was going off and, you know, with every successful carry that he had, it just was putting more and more pressure on those guys to get downhill and stop the run, which was opening up more and more space behind the linebackers. And it was uh, it was an impressive game for the Packers, to say the yeah. least. LaFleur is actually headed to Shanahan uh, next week, play the San Francisco 49ers. So. San Fran with the bye. I mean, as, as well as Green Bay played, and uh, it, it's – you know, you always root for the underdog, seven seed. Um, you know, San Fran is so good this year. I mean, I'll I'll have my popcorn ready. Oh, yeah, no doubt. And then on Sunday night, we got to watch the first playoff victory in 32 years for the city of Detroit. That's right, it's the just Lions. fucking electric, huh? The Lions. They had the Eminem humble- up in the... Up Detroit in the suite, Lion going crazy. The humble. They are, I mean, they're they're just knee biting out of here, man. They're just find a way, just clawing away. Blue collar auto working lions uh, beat <laughs> the Los Angeles Rams twenty four to twenty three at home at Ford Field. Good for them, man. Jared Jared Goff. It was that was an electric. This was honestly, this was the only good game of Wild Card Weekend. If we're being it was, honest, it was. A it was the only one that was remotely close. It was uh, down to the wire. I didn't know who was going to pull it out, uh, but the Lions get it done, baby. The Lions. Jared Goff looked impressive, of course, and probably felt good. Probably felt really good. Probably felt real nice. And I thought he handled it with with the utmost class, class, but you could see it in his face how happy he was to get that victory. Lions head coach Dan Campbell gave a speech to the team after the game, and he finished it. with a hearty, very hearty, you're good enough for Detroit, Jared Golf. <laughs> That's pretty good. I mean, is there a more inspirational guy in this? I mean, listen. I'm trying to find I mean, the camera's been on him, so he's been he's been in quotes for a lot of good shit. Yeah. You don't you don't get access to everybody's team meetings like that. You don't get access to, you know But it's all the time. You're right. It's even in interviews like post game, like pre game interviews. He just infuses belief and like it's you gotta uh, you love know, that man he's a motivating son of a son of a buck man whatever I, I feel like however much coffee he is drinking it is working he is revving <laughs> he, them dudes up you think man. he's a coffee i think he's more of like a pre-workout guy no no like, no, he's no, just no instead he, of pre- he said he, he said in that that first press conference he's like drinking one of those before whatever he's a he's a coffee caffeine drinker. fiend oh yeah right. caffeine fiend i like that i'm with i'm in on that too Natural caffeine. Uh, Zorder. Uh, 
two venti coffees from Starbucks with two espresso shots in each. You know what we call that? The espresso shot in the coffee? We call that, that diesel. The diesel fuel. Nice. Diesel fuel. Uh, more than 1,100 milligrams of America's caffeine. America's trying to get rid of the diesel fuel. Not up in my house. <laughs> I'm about to say I'm on uh, St. Brown. Yeah. Led the led the Lions receivers with seven receptions of 110 yards. Man, he's playing his tail off right now, too. And he had the big uh, big catch at the end of the game. Everything on the line, they decided to throw it in a two-minute situation to close it out. I think it was still like second down, too, mm-hmm. if I'm not yeah. mistaken. Like yeah. it was early they, wanted to in the- catch him. they wanted to catch him thinking run. It's actually not a bad play, man. Not a bad play. <laughs> I mean, it worked great. Yeah, absolutely electric game up there in Detroit. Kind of mentioned it before. I had Eminem on the Jumbotron. Sing and lose yourself. Ah, oh, God. Yeah. Fire me up. Brings you back to the first CD you ever owned. <laughs> the Eminem show, baby. The Trav, intro to the intro to the albums, the curtains. Well, you know what happened to that CD, though. Do you remember? You uh-uh. don't remember this? I don't. You, the, you bought you bought that CD, and Dad got into the car. After you had bought that CD, and he took it out and threw it out the window. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you don't remember this. It's one of the I funniest don't. things That's I ever saw funny. happen. <laughs> Fuck you, Dad. He started hearing some of the words and everything. <laughs> Hi, kids. You want to watch me? Stick exactly. Nine inch he was like, "What my the eyelids? fuck is this?" And he threw it right out the window. <laughs> I remember that like it was yesterday. Yeah, he was not a fan of some Good loady, Wody. Must oh. be gone off that water bottle. Oh, man. Oh, man. That's pretty good shit right there. Yeah, shout out to Eminem. Congratulations, Detroit. And the Eminem, and the Eminem show, man. <laughs> yeah. One of the greatest albums of all time. Slim Shady. Will he please stand up? Yeah. yeah, the Bills beat the Steelers 31-17 on Monday Night Football. Uh, Josh Allen had a big old game, threw for 203 and three tutties and rushed for another 74 yards and a touchdown. Yep. Um, playing Josh Allen football, man, just Dude. out there flying around. Um, no turnovers. I mean, that's uh, it's going to be a big challenge for us next week, man. But the big story of this game was the uh, the chaos leading up to the game due to all the snow in Buffalo over the weekend. The game uh, first getting postponed from a Saturday to, or I'm sorry, from a, a Sunday afternoon to a Monday afternoon. Dude, I don't. And then there was also a travel ban put on uh, into effect from Saturday to Monday morning. How do you feel about the game being postponed? Dude, it shouldn't have been. I, I'm, I'm against postponements. Got to play the ball as it lies. <laughs> I had to, I had to hit it off a of Frankenstein's fat foot over there. <laughs> That's such a banger. The game must go on. The show must go on. You're right. Whoever dude. gets this to the stadium. Football. Listen, you don't got to drive to the stadium. Walk. Whoever can get 11 players to the field wins. Damn. That's some, some Neanderthal. The governor of New York felt differently. So uh, <laughs> it was postponed. <laughs> dude, is there anything more electric than inclement weather? Everybody wants to go to domes. I heard multiple people say they want to go to domes. Dude, it is so exciting. No. No. Takes away from the game. That's football, bro. It like builds the drama and like the. You got fans shoveling snow off of seats just so they can sit down. I mean, this was um, it in, it invigorated an entire community to make sure they could watch some football together. I mean, this is incredible. This is good stuff, man. Shout out to the Bills Mafia, man. Dude, Bills Mafia proving yet through. again, proving yet again, they're one of the coolest fucking fan bases out there, man. Jumping just through fine, tables, just they're shoveling <laughs> seats. <laughs> they're doing it's it a, all. One, man. one guy was doing a slide. Yeah. We'll get to yeah. that in a second. Yeah, back to the game. Back to the game. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Well, the game was the game, I guess. The game was the game. So back back to before the game. <laughs> Bills also put out several calls to action trying to get locals to come out and shovel snow at the stadium for 20 bucks an hour, including uh, an overnight shift on Sunday to make sure they were ready for Monday evening. Overnight shift. Is that double pay? Nope. Still uh, 20 an hour. <laughs> <laughs> it's not bad for shoveling snow. Did we ever? We never went up and down. I did we never went bit. up and down the street, though. Yeah, we we didn't go like that far, but we we asked a couple of neighbors. I remember sure. getting a few, I guess, a few uh, sidewalks. Yeah, but um, dude, I always thought it was reckless that dad. Well, dad used, used to, to make us shovel 
the neighbor's sidewalk if we were out there shoveling them. And they, if yeah, they hadn't done yeah. it yet, he would just be like, no, you're yeah. you're going to knock that one out and too. And then Mrs. Johnson would just go and redo it herself because we would do it like Terribly. jabronis. Yeah. yeah most <laughs> she was like, this is, this is not yeah. safe to even walk anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to our neighbor. This is actually more dangerous than if you would have just left the snow there. Now it's slick as ice. Um, Mrs. J, you're the best. Thank you for teaching us that our shoveling wasn't good enough. <laughs> I learned. I learned from that. Yeah, but I thought it was the funniest thing ever. We get out of the house and dad gets a, a snowblower. Yeah, well, he's not shoveling snow. He's got bad yeah, back. of course. But he was out there and he would all, he never like, he would always sh- like blow the snow on other people, on the oh, other course. lawns. Yeah. It's never going on our lawn. Snowblower 101 right there. <laughs> Everybody knows that. He First blows. rule of snowblowing, you got to get there right when the snow hits. You can't wait for it to cake down. Second rule of snowblowing, you blow the snow on the other person's yard. That's how it works. <laughs> Everybody knows the rules of snowblowing. <laughs> got to love Papa Kels, baby. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty electric, man. Who knows? Uh, might need another night nice shift uh, coming up this weekend in Buffalo. Oh, if this happened in Cleveland uh, when we were growing up, do you think we would uh, we would have gone down there? Yeah, I think so. I mean, we never went down to the stadium. We never saw a game. One you time did. we went down. Just, no, no, I saw you play a preseason game there. That was the only time I ever went there for an actual football game. We went down there for the Drew Carey show. For the Drew Carey show. The Drew Carey show needed some extras. They needed some extras, and we showed up. So I guess we probably would have showed up. They didn't even pay us twenty dollars to be extras in the Drew Carey show. We definitely would have showed up. Are you kidding me? Yeah, we were out there for free in the in the middle of July, <laughs> just, just sitting in the stands. Torched. Yeah, with no concessions open, <laughs> we're just standing there while they were trying to get Drew Carey and the cast to go up and down the steps for like a one scene. Yeah, yeah, we would have definitely been down there. Why? Because this is one of the coolest bonding experiences you can have with your friends. Dude, I mean, it looked fun. I kind of. I mean, I'm not doing anything next week. I might show up to go shovel some snow. It sounds like a good idea. <laughs> That's, I mean, that'd be pretty Dude, good. I could bring the flamethrower uh, you Camp jurgen has got. You Just start flamethrowing the seats. These Dude. guys are trying to you, shovel snow. Let's get some flame in there. Melt you stuff. might you do. All right. Chill out. All right. Don't get, don't get Bill Melt Mafia seats. too fired up. All right. Don't get him too fired up. All right. I still got to go in there and win a football game. Let's talk about something that's been a game changer for Jason. Our next partner, (laughs) AG1. All right, let's talk about it, Trav. I've been using AG1 every day for the last year and a half, and it's become the foundation of my daily routine. AG1 is made of a comprehensive blend of ingredients with extensively researched benefits. Plus, it's got our backs on the essentials. Brain, gut, immune support. AG1 covers all the bases. That's right. And people always ask me what the best way to elevate their health is. Uh, My answer is always undoubtedly AG1. And that's why we've partnered with them for so long. Go to drinkag1.com slash new heights and you can get a free one year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first order. That's drinkag1.com slash new heights. Elevate your health. Keep it simple and join us on the journey to new heights with AG1. This new year, the easiest healthy habit to start is one for your dog. The Farmer's Dog makes feeding real healthy dog food easy and convenient, and your dog will absolutely love it. It's smart, healthy pet food that even you can feel good about feeding your pup. That's why it's time to quit the kibble, kick the cans, and start fresh. The Farmer's Dog makes and delivers fresh, healthy dog food right to your door. It's developed by vets, nutritionally balanced, and made from real meat and veggies to ensure Safety standards of human food. That's right. Pet food to the standards of human food. The farmer's dog isn't just fresh, higher quality food. They also send pre-portioned specifically for your dog based on their unique nutritional needs. It doesn't matter if your pet is young or old. It's always the right time to begin investing in their health. That means more happy, healthy, and full years together. Get 50% off your first box of fresh Healthy food at thefarmersdog.com. Plus, you get free shipping. Just go to thefarmersdog.com slash new heights to get 50% off. That's thefarmersdog.com slash new heights. I got some big news, 92 percenters. Jason, can you guess what it is? What's that? No. Uh, Come on, is one guess. It, um, Take one guess. Is it about the experience smart money 
debit card that helps you build all the credit without the debt. I'm starring in a new commercial, uh, Experian, Experian commercial. It's a it's an ad running where I uh, actually was on the field with a bunch of CFL guys talking a little Zach Laris in between takes. Um, but you got to check it out. I'm like floating all while I'm holding the car. It's pretty sweet. That's dope. If you're into that kind of stuff. And 92 percenters, the experience smart money debit card and digital checking account really is amazing because it could help you build credit without adding the debt. And once you fund your account, you can tap to pay with your virtual debit card right away. And it's accepted anywhere MasterCard is accepted. To get your experience, smart money, debit card, and digital checking account, go to Experian.com slash Kelsey. Experian is not a bank. Experian Boost results will vary. See terms at Experian.com slash legal. Let's talk some coaching chaos, man, since the season's been over. It's been absolutely nuts. It has been. It's been a wild end of the season, man. A lot of legendary coaches are are changing. Uh, Apart from the... All the playoff storylines, eight total teams have now let their head coaches go. 25% of the league has fired their head coaches. Shit. First up, the most surprising one probably is uh, Pete Carroll. I don't think anybody anticipated that one. Yeah, didn't see that one. I don't even know if they're parting ways. Has that even been said? Because I thought there was some stipulations that they were going to try and retain him in some capacity. But then Pete came out and said that he wanted to keep coaching. I mean, he's loved up there. I don't really know what's happening. Jody Allen released a statement announcing that Carroll wasn't fired, but his role is evolving from head coach to a advisor. That's a very nice way of saying that, Jody. Pete Carroll said, I uh, completed, uh, I competed pretty hard to be the coach, just so you know. He wanted everybody to know that he wanted to remain the coach. Yeah. Uh, I realize I'm about as old as you can get in this business. <laughs> hey, uh, don't do that to yourself, which, Pete. It doesn't come off that way, Pete. Just so Funky. you know, it does not come off that way. It not by any means. The energy you bring, uh uh-uh, I ain't seeing it. It'll be interesting to see what happens. I don't know, is is he applying for other coaching opportunities or is he he taking this evolution into advisor uh, as the job he wants? Because I'm assuming if he wanted to be a head coach, there'd be other opportunities with how much success he's had each and every year up there in Seattle uh, and really his whole career. Yeah, and to give a... Give you 92 percenters a, a glimpse at that. Pete Carroll is the winningest head coach in Seahawks history um, with a Super Bowl to prove his, uh, his dominance. The Titans decided to uh, fire head coach Mike Vrabel. Vrabel was the head coach of the Tennessee Titans for six seasons. He led the Titans to four consecutive winning seasons when he uh, arrived in 2018, but finished Uh, The last two seasons, um, multiple games under 500, unfortunately. Vrabel, Mike Vrabel, Northeast Ohio guy, Ohio State alum, I ran out. Vrabel Vrabel. was named the NFL's Coach of the Year, uh, February of 2022. Titans owner Amy Adams, uh, Amy Adams Strunk, was uh, asked about the possibility of trading Vrabel. Yes, we thought about it uh, at the end of the day with the league rules the way they are. Um, it would have maybe put us back three weeks. And, you know, to get the right head coach, I was just not willing to go back of the line and take a chance of missing out on someone we really wanted. I think that makes sense. I I understand a lot of people saying that they, they certainly probably could have traded Vrabel. It's surprising that they fired him at all, to be honest with you. Definitely wasn't expecting that. Braves, Especially with his success and how yeah, much he's loved he's by his players. everywhere. And I know the last two seasons haven't gone very well, but I think uh, there's some other issues going on there that I think might not be at the feet of uh, Vrabel. Braves. But either way, I do agree with this assessment. I do think – I know a lot of people are saying you should have traded him, get some value uh, for the coach. Uh, but the reality is you only have so much time to get into this hiring process. And I think it's more important – to, to hire the best candidate that you like than it is to get value uh, for the, the old ball coach, uh, Mike Braves. But certainly surprised. This one was yeah. maybe more surprising than even Pete Carroll. I know we said that that one was the most surprising. This one was right up there with it, and it came out of nowhere. There was a lot of – I didn't really hear any inkling of this permeating in the media in the, the days before it. So very, very surprising to see Vrabel out in Tennessee. Yeah. And more major coaching news, Uh, the Patriots and Bill Belichick have decided to part ways after 24 seasons and six Super Bowl victories together. This news is a little bit 
old now, but we didn't really get a chance to touch on it last week. Yeah. Uh, we already talked about this, about how much we think of Bill Belichick and the legacy and the unbelievable coach that he is. Um, it's, it's hard to believe that he is not the head coach of the New England Patriots anymore by choice, like not by retirement. Right. I think uh, everybody just kind of, I just anticipated that being the way it was going to go as he was going to do it until he couldn't anymore. And that was going to be that, but on his terms, yeah, clearly he's still trying to coach. And there was a, a parting of ways there in new England. Uh, the Falcons appear to be one of the teams as uh, Belichick just completed an interview with Atlanta over the weekend. I mean, what are you even interviewing? <laughs> yeah. That'd be so weird. To Maybe just to get an understand. Yeah. With Bill Belichick. So what are you going to do, Bill? What, show us your expertise. <laughs> How do we know you know what you're doing? <laughs> <laughs> like you have to feel like you're almost the one being interviewed when you're interviewing Bill Belichick. I feel like if you're Bill, you're just like, <laughs> listening to these questions or you're just like. Yeah. All right, Bill. I know more than everybody in this room combined. <laughs> like, <laughs> Tell me what you learned. At your last job. What are questions? Do you have any references? (laughs) Do you have any referrals? Is anyone who can we uh, who can we call on your behalf? The Patriots have since announced uh, that they've hired Gerard Mayo. Yes, Travis, uh, in honor of your favorite food item. Gerard Mayo is the next head coach of the New England Patriots or the current head coach of the. New England Patriots. Dude, he's he's one year older than you. I know. Now, I've heard nothing but great stuff about Gerard. That's why he got hired immediately. I think it was kind of in his contract saying he was going to be the next ball coach. There's been a lot of stuff coming out of New England about what, um, I guess, Gerard Mayo has meant to that organization. So I don't think this is that surprising. I think um, I've heard a lot from a lot of people – uh, how smart and uh, how great of a coach he has been in his role. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think uh, within the stuff that was in their contract, it seems like new England was ready to go in this direction whenever bill uh, was being let go. Yeah. And there was an expected uh, outpouring of appreciation for uh, the old ball coach, Bill Belichick, after the news dropped, including a message from Tom Brady on Instagram. I'm incredibly grateful to have played with the best coach in the history of the NFL. We accomplished some amazing things over a long period of time, many of which will be hard to replicate. He set the tone for the organization to never falter in the face of adversity and to do what we could do and what was in our control, which was to go out and do our job. I could never have been the player I was without you, Coach Belichick. Love to see it, man. Especially from Tom. I think there's been a lot of noise around, uh, you know, Tom Brady, Bill Belichick, Robert Kraft, who's meant more to the organization. And I just hate when it gets to that because it's always all of them. And um, to have Tom come out here and to admit that, you know, he would have never become the player he was without Bill Belichick, I think uh, is the right thing to do and the honest thing to say. Belichick and Patriots owner Robert Kraft held a press conference after the news broke uh, and Bill opened with a classic (laughs) one-liner. I mean, this is classic. I, I can't do the Belichick impersonation. Can you do the Belichick impersonation? There's only no. one person that can do the Belichick. Only, only Jules? Only Julian Edelman. <laughs> only Maverick, man. Good morning. I haven't seen this many cameras since we signed Tebow. <laughs> Classic. Also, in quotes, saying, I'll always be a Patriot. I look forward to coming back here. But at, at this time, I'm looking forward to move on uh, and excited for the future. So are we, Bill. Shout out to Big Bill, man. We'll be interested to see you make your decision, dude. Yeah. Fan mentions of the week. All let's right, now let's move on to some fan mentions. Our first fan mention comes from uh, Zach Brown Band. All right. Hey! One of our favorites, man, um, who shared a clip of us signing, uh, singing along to uh, their song Toes uh, on last week's episode. Sounding good, brothers. Who wants to hear the Kels boys sing harmony on the next? Ooh, hey. Where? How did I miss this? You did, right? Little do they know uh, that we don't know how to harmonize. We've already tried this multiple times we've been on the trying show. to do this with the State Farm. We got to figure this out. Two years now. <laughs> Maybe we can get on this because that would be a complete honor to do anything Dude, with those guys. What? Get to learn how to harmonize? I'd be fucking everywhere we go. We'd have to at least hit one. Uh, uh, you 
had it. You had it, and then you shifted. Let's do it again. Uh, uh, you had it. You were with it, and then you went up, and then you lost it again. God damn it! It was good. Right. That was solid. We I'll, can do it. Maybe one day I'll be good, good enough to <laughs> harmonize with Jason Kelsey. Appreciate the shout out, Zach Brown. Yeah, hopefully we can catch you guys in concert soon. On last week's episode, we talked about how I couldn't find any smells like Jason Candy, Jason Kelsey candles. Um, and the smells like Travis uh, candle fan mentioned, uh, but the 92 percenters have now fixed that as if I wanted uh, candles to smell like me, which I don't. I'm, I'm very anti candles. It already looks like it's just like a candle of like mayonnaise. I mean, the color paper. It just looks is, like. That's a Jason just, Kelsey candle right there. Yeah. You just leak mayonnaise going out <laughs> of your pores. Like mayonnaise. That does look like a jar of mayonnaise. Some very organic. Mayonnaise butter. Uh, you know. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> at Steelers just on Twitter tweeted at us. Up that search game, Jason Kelsey, and uh, she attached the Etsy link to the brand new Smells Like Jason Kelsey candle. Um, <laughs> the candle says it smells like a spicy combination of baby poop, wet flip-flops, Old Spice, and dial soap. Man. Um, That's a crazy I mean, concoction. Yeah, don't. I don't know who wants to light that on fire. Someone's listening to the show. At least somebody is. Don't buy these, guys. Please do not buy these. A few other suggestions for what Jason Candle smells like. Are you pro-candle? Are you pro-candle? I'm anti-candle. You're anti-candle? I'm anti- anti-candle. anti Scented candles. I'm I'm pro-unscented candles. I'm anti-scented candles. Yeah. There's no way that's healthy for you. There's no way chemicals being burned by a flame and going into the air to the point that you can smell them is good for you. There's no chance. I, I think it's indifferent. I don't think it. I don't think it matters. No, that's unhealthy. I'm out on it. <laughs> I, I hate can. I, I hate scented candles with a passion. I blow them out when I go into doors. <laughs> <laughs> nice one. If Kylie's got one up there. Hey, what's that over there? <laughs> so you're. So how do you make the room smell better? Uh, I don't ever have a problem with the way the room smells. It's just the room. The room is what the room does. <laughs> so I don't. Think the another thing, dude. When you're in the bathroom, do you guys have the sprays? Do you have the sprays in the? Do you have the sprays in the bathroom at uh, Kansas City? No. Do we got the sprays like the fragrance things in the stalls at the Eagles? Those and never Every time work. I'm in there, somebody spraying those never work. spray. Uh, now it just smells like ass and Febreze. I don't want to <laughs> smell either of these. All right. <laughs> There's no way I got I got poop particles and chemicals going and into my feces, nose. And the feces, the 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 poop smell will forever override whatever scent you got going on in there. I, I I am perfectly fine smelling poop. I've smelled poop for a long portion of my life. I would rather just smell poop Poo-pour-ay. than poopy Febreze with <laughs> chemicals. I'm out on poop, the chemicals. Poopy Febreze is worse than just poop too. It sneaks in. That poop smell sneaks in and just slaps the shit out of you. It's just like it still doesn't smell good. Yeah, I'm out. Yeah. I'm out on fragrances other than deodorant. I do that. Yeah, I was about to say, why do you do deodorant then? Well, because if I don't, I'll smell like complete crap. That's why. Yeah. All right. Well, at least you have some sort of standard. Yeah. But it's just to get me back to baseline. (laughs) Let's move on. I think we've touched on it enough. Yeah, and lastly, from Wilbur1997 on the New Heights Reddit page, who wrote, uh, so Travis hates his rookie card. I fixed it. Um, <laughs> little Duke's mayonnaise. Nice. Yeah, that's yep. uh, didn't Going fix right it. In the mouth hole. Didn't fix it. It's still disgusting. Yeah, it's worse. Yeah, I will. I refuse to ever sign that card again. So if you ask me to sign that card, I don't care if you're a kid. You were just driving up the value of that one that's signed. Cool. It'll never be. You'll never get me to sign another one. So the the less amount of cards that have value of that card, if that Will even you sign one sense. for me so that I can. No. Have a valuable card. Anyone that asks me to sign that card, I'm going to put no on the card. That'd be. I mean, maybe that that might increase the value of it too. No. All right. I don't really know how the values of cards work, but. Apparently, yours after the episode has skyrocketed. I don't know if you saw this on Etsy, but you currently have a rookie card going for 50K on eBay. Not Etsy, eBay. 
nobody's buying that. Nobody's buying that fucking card. All right. Just because we'll it's listed for fifty thousand dollars doesn't mean it's going for fifty thousand dollars. We'll see. Sassy gal beauty begs to differ. We'll see how it goes. How many days is left on this one? We gotta keep keep a track on. We gotta keep track, see what this thing does. Yeah. See how much see how he drops down. I think it says one watch in the last twenty four hours. <laughs> Nobody wants that card for fifty grand. If anybody buys that card for fifty grand, somebody's gonna buy it. I'm telling you, so fucking dumb. If somebody buys that card for fifty grand, would you sign it if they bought it for fifty grand? I put no on it. I mean, that's a sign. It's not. All right, let's get to some no dumb questions before we get out of here. Uh, it's time to answer some no dumb question because there's no such thing as dumb questions, just dumb people. Yeah, dummies. That's right. No Dumb Questions is brought to you by our friends at Buffalo Wild Wings. Not right now. Let's go sports bar. <laughs> Thank you, Travis. Not right now. From at StubbaFam5028 on YouTube, No Dumb Question, if you could only have five apps on your smartphone, what would they be? Love your podcast, in parentheses. Thank you so much, Stubba Bubba. Nice. I would have no apps. And I would throw my phone into a volcano of uh, magma because I hate how much I'm on my phone. I hate everything to do with my phone. You love it, Jason. Are you kidding me? It's like I'm your to own it. personal search engine. I'm addicted to it. I fr- I can't stand it. I don't. You gain like that so I'm much knowledge much. out of it. You love it. I do. I do like the amount of knowledge that it brings, but I hate the amount of distraction that it brings. I hate when my kid tells me to put down my phone because it lets me know how bad of a parent I'm being. When your own daughter says, "Daddy, put your phone down." Job. Much that cuts into your soul and lets you know how shitty of a dad you're being. <laughs> God damn it. Next time I fucking hate this thing. Next time she says that, can you just like screenshot what you're looking at? <laughs> It's going to be something. It's going to be some like it's gonna be high nonsense. tech fucking. It'll no. It'll probably be yard tool uh, or a crossword some shit. puzzle on the New York <laughs> Times because I do those for some reason. <laughs> for some reason, that's what it'll probably be. Just get the New York Times sent to you so you can do them in person, so you don't have to feel as bad doing them in your phone. I used to have them sent to me solely so I could fill out the cross- crossword puzzle in like in pen. And then Kylie got upset because they would just compile at the uh, front of the uh, driveway because I would never bring them Never inside. finish them? <laughs> no, I would never bring them inside. They would just sit at the front of the driveway, and then we'd have eight newspapers on the front door, uh, front of yeah. the driveway. I can see how she could get pissed off about that. All right, well, back to the actual question because your answer is fucking ridiculous. Oh, yeah, we didn't answer it. Five apps. What are you going with? Five apps. Uh. So are we assuming... The gar- like the included apps are like messages is included. All that's included, yeah. Okay. So we're just so talking about like the auxiliary additional apps apps, that don't yeah. come with the phone. Yeah. All right. I like that rule. All right. What are your five apps? Ah oh, man. I'm gonna have to go. Well, I guess iTunes comes with it. So iTunes comes with it. All right. Well then But iTunes music. I'll say iTunes music is different. Because iTunes music doesn't come with it. You gotta pay for iTunes music. Yeah, iTunes music. All right. iTunes music. All right, iTunes music. Um, is that what it's called? Apple Music. Apple Music. There we go. We're fucking idiots. Yeah. All right. Man. Apple Music. I got Spotify. If I'm being honest. Anyways, Apple yeah. Music. All right. I'm gonna Spotify. I'm not gonna lie. I'm I'll go Spotify, Spotify right. for me. Let's. Uh, yeah, I'll go Spotify. I'm a Spotify guy. If I'm being honest, I have subscriptions to all three. Just like I have subscriptions. I have SoundCloud. To every single I have... one. <laughs> I have Spotify. I have Apple Music, and I have that stupid Cubos one that I need to fucking cancel, and I haven't canceled yet. Anyways, yes, Spotify. We'll just music app, um, <laughs> music app, uh, music app. Um, God damn it! I guess if the the essentials are already on there, I don't I don't know what other what else I need. I I really only Instagram, Twitter. I don't need that though. But what you don't need any you don't need the any of it. This You're is right. asking what are your top five apps you have on your phone if you could only have five of them. It's not a necessity oh. thing. It's a desire thing. Let's just go like this. I'll just go to the, my most used apps. Let's go to that. I was about to say, yeah. How do, how do I find this? It's a good call. Screen time? Screen time. Maybe. App, website activity. Turn on app and website activity. I don't want to turn that on. I don't know who's who's going to be looking at that. Uh, all right, my dude. Uh, all right, here we go. I got... Uh, How'd you find it? 
you go to screen time and it tells you what you use your screen for. I got what Spotify. Where I'm on screen time. Edit, yeah. You Where's, where down. do I go in screen time? Scroll down. To what? Most used. It says it right there. What I don't have about? that. Just go selection. to settings. Go to settings. I'm in settings. I'm in screen time. All right. And then in the you'll, it says right there, as you're looking at daily average, it says see all this is all the, the This website. is all I see. I don't see any of that. Damn, you just got an old ass phone. Did you go to settings? All right. I'm in settings. I'm in screen settings, time. Settings, screen time. And it says yes. see all apps and website activity. Yep, I don't see that. All right. Well, I have that and I'm going to. It says with... app and website activity. Do I got to turn that on? I have that turned off because I don't like people. Yeah. I don't know what Apple's doing with that. All right. I got turned it on. Okay. Now I see it. Okay. Uh, see all app website activity. Okay, mine's been off, so I don't have anything being monitored. Okay, anyways. All right, what do you got? How do I turn this back off? Good luck. Turn off that. Okay. I like living secrecy. All right, what do you got? Spotify, music app. Spotify. I got Safari, which comes with it, so I guess it doesn't even count. Doesn't count. Doesn't count. Um, ESPN on ESPN that counts. a lot. That counts. ESPN app. Surprised. Big ESPN app. All right. Yeah, I love checking scores, man. Love checking everything. All right. YouTube. It's a good app. It's a good app. One of my one of my favorite apps. It's a very solid app. <laughs> Highly recommend. For those I'm of you. So glad I got accepted for <laughs> having that as one of my top apps. My security app for the house. For my house. You have a security app. Yeah. Okay. Gets like all the gates and house stuff. Does it do you control any guns on it? No, but I can call the. I can like press a button and police will be at my door in like two seconds. You can dial nine one one at any second. You don't need an app to call the police, Travis. You don't even need. Yeah, but you don't even got to talk to anybody on this. You just press a button and they're there. <laughs> yeah, Instagram is obviously on there, so I'm just gonna keep rolling with that Instagram. I don't have a security app, but I'll, I'll go. Those are probably my favorite ones as well. Outside of the security app, if I'm if I'm adding one to it, I'll probably say the Lumosity. Dude, I was big into Lumosity for a little bit. I feel like Lumosity does. Everybody is just way higher rated than. There's no way everybody is in. Like the ninety percentile of any of this stuff, really, but everybody is in the app. So that you think they're just blowing smoke? Yeah, I think it's all. For those just of like, you that don't know what Lumosity is, it's a brain teaser, kind of like a um, an, I don't even know how to like just like common trivia. No, there's different like brain games. teasers. Some of, brain some teasers, of them right? are for sure. Some of them are like speed based. Some of them are memory based. Some of them are like language based, uh, math based. We got a bunch of different like games and games. tests, yeah. it's, but it's all designed around neuroplasticity. If you watch any of the abs ads for um, Lumosity, of course, Anyways, not. of course not. I haven't been on that as much. So recently, recently the game that I've been doing have been the, uh, the New York times <laughs> like app. Yeah, I hear you. I've been on I've been on a uh, sports trivia sports trivia app. We're digressing. Those are our apps. That's the answer you get. On to the next no dumb question from G Samamama Samama two zero eight on Club ninety two with Girl Scouts cookie season officially underway. Please settle the debate for our troop. What is the best Girl Scout cookie? Our Girl Scout troop would love to know your favorite. Please, when I say this, do not send me a bunch of boxes of these Girl Scout cookies. Don't you do it. Don't you Don't do it. Don't send them to us. Um, but just like our favorite cereal and our favorite candy, it's something with peanut butter and chocolate because that's the best combination <laughs> in the world. Uh, Tagalongs. Tagalongs. Hands down. I've noticed this. Depending on what area you're at in the country, there's different Girl Scout cookies and brands, and they're not always named the same. I've only seen one. It's that red box. They're both red, but so, and I don't think, I feel like in one part of the country, they're called Tagalongs, and in another part of the country, they might be called something else. Let's look this up. What other good ones are there? There's uh, there's just a straight up sugar cookie. I think that's the blue box. Yep. That one's pretty good. Ooh, the lemon the lemon cookies, I, I do enjoy, though. They're a nice switch up. Lemon cookie? There's a lemon cookie? Yeah, it's like the, the yellow one. I'm pretty sure. The yellow one's like Samoa, I thought. Or is that purple? Purple is the uh, the coconut Coconut-y. chocolate. Yeah. Those, those are yeah. good, too. The oatmeal coconut. Whew. Yeah. Ah, God, those are dangerous, too. 
Anyways, we answered the question, I guess. It's it's tagalongs. Tagalongs. You can't beat it. They're everyone's favorite. Um they'll be the best uh until Dosi Dos. That's what I'm saying. Mm-mm. We always never, knew them as never tagalongs, heard of but if you're in a weird part of the country, they call it Dosi Dos. Yeah, like a weirdos. That's all we got for yeah, tagalongs. Yeah. That was No Dumb Questions, brought to you by Buffalo Wild Wings. Let's go sports bar. <laughs> All right. Let's move on to some New Heights stamp of the week. For both of us, let's hand out some stamps for players who took their games to New Heights in that wild card round. Yeah, baby. New Heights stamp of the week is brought to you by our friends at <laughs> Accelerator Active Energy Drink. Look at that. Accelerator Active Energy is available on Amazon, Meyer, Quick Trip, and Giant Eagle. Ooh, How about that? that? We're everywhere. Little giant bro, eagle. Man. We're fucking everywhere. Jason, go Alrighty. ahead and hit him with your uh, stamp. Dude, after watching the chaos that ensued over the week in Buffalo, I would be remiss if I gave this stamp to anybody but Bills Mafia. That's right. The Buffalo Bills fans for shoveling snow at the stadium over multiple games so that people could sit in those seats and watch their team play. Man, that's awesome. This is what you love about football. This is what you love about community. That's fucking electric, man. Check out Chunk here. Taking a trip <laughs> Chunk, down the slide. Yeah, Chunk. Yeah. Straight out of the Goonies, man. Dude. Man, that looks fun. Yeah. Shirt no off shirt and everything. shirt on. I don't care. Truffle shuffling down the sidewalk <laughs> aisle. Whatever that is. <laughs> Look at this guy. <laughs> love to see it. Love to see it. That's actually a pretty, it's pretty good contraption. That's how they get the snow off of the steps, and that's pretty good. You just kind of throw it on the slide, and it just – that's some good shit right there. And it moves it to the field where there's a front-end loader for it. How about it, man? Yeah. Shout-out to the Mafia. There's also this insane clip of a a group of Bill's Mafia standing up on a snowbank and then jumping onto a table. I've heard that this is a thing they do in Buffalo. Burning table, yeah. I mean, this is – Burning table? Yeah, what's – What are they, crazy? What's a segment on the Bills Mafia if we're not going to show them going through a table? I mean, but this is a burning table. Yeah, they're all they're all on fire. If it's not on fire, it doesn't count. I don't think. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. Whoa. It's pretty. Yeah. Who doesn't love a good table? I mean, breaking tables is just fun. Yeah, <laughs> Bills like Mafia inside. with the table <laughs> from the top rope. Oh man. Yeah, electric man. Uh, and lastly, Bills fans deserve some special respect uh just for getting to their seats which were still covered in snow at game time uh there was this one ridiculous photo of a couple bills fans in their seats early at the game the snow was piled so high around them you can just see their heads poking out look at that that's wild (laughs) that's nuts This this is a message to all you guys trying to go to domes don't do it don't do it look at how much fun and this is causing this entire community you don't get this in domes. No. You just don't get it. You get air conditioning and heat, but. That's not bad either, though. All right. Who are you going with? Lions head coach Dan Campbell led the Lions to their first playoff win in 32 years. Um, you just got to love it, man. You got to love everything they got going right now. Um, easy to root for because of the people they got and the, uh, the way they're doing it, the way they handle themselves and go about it. No doubt. Turned the franchise around in just three years as a head coach. The team went from five and eleven the year before Campbell got hired. Uh, this season they went twelve and five. This was only their second twelve win season in franchise history, and they won their first playoff game in thirty two years, as I just said. Way to go, Dan! Got to give him his love. Um, way to take your game to new heights, Coach Campbell. Um, absolute legend in your own right as a player and as a and, a, and as a head coach now, and uh, love to see uh, what you guys are doing over there and uh, how you're leading those guys. It's uh, it's fun to watch, man. All right, let's get to the new heights bracket. That's right, it is live, folks. It's going well, down right now. Uh, before we get out of here, ninety two percenters, we have a very important update on the new heights bracket. Best NFL team name is officially up and available for all of you to fill out. Uh, follow us on social for all the info you need to fill out your own bracket. You only have a few days, few days to submit them. Uh, so make sure you're doing that ASAP. ASAP. Here is what the bracket is. These are the first round matchups and the seeds, which are not seeded, but this is how it will unfold uh, throughout the competition. We will reveal 
in a future episode uh, what you all will be playing for. Uh, but it is gold. That's it's right. Epic. It is yeah, gold. It is a uh, a trophy that we have commissioned. I like gold. A trophy we, that we have commissioned is a six month bill. We started this in the off season. It just finest. It has finest finally been finished. Yeah, this has been nuts. It is over a hundred pounds, over four feet tall. Uh, we got some inspiration from some of the trophies we saw last year. We got a good <laughs> glimpse at uh, not only the NFL's championship trophy, we got a good glimpse at the NBA championship trophy and Larry O'Brien. Stanley. We got a good look at the Stanley Cup. Lord Stanley. And that inspired us to create a new heights trophy. Um, and you guys are epic. not going to want to miss this. Absolutely epic. And the winner will receive a piece of that trophy. That is solid gold. So, yep. uh, yeah, if you want a piece of that trophy, pounds, 100 pounds of solid gold. <laughs> that's right. This is our aggro, Craig. So be ready uh, to fill out your brackets. Uh, you don't get the 100-pound thing. There's only a piece of it that you're getting that solid gold. But the winner will receive a piece of the New Heights trophy. That right now. We'll show you what that looks like at a future date when we can. But anyways, that's it. That wraps up this show. This episode of New Heights is officially in the books. Make sure you're subscribed on YouTube to the New Heights channel so that you know when new episodes are coming out. Check out our new bonus video this Friday. We'll be doing a divisional round preview. Take a look at some new fan art and talk about the first round matchups in our best NFL team name bracket. Listen and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Once again, New Heights is presented by Wave Sports and Entertainment and brought to you by the all-new experience Smart Money Debit Card, the debit card that builds credit without the debt. Hey, you don't want debt? Get the card. How about that one? Follow the show on all social media at New Heights Show with 1S and thanks to our production and crew for always making us look better than we are and to the 92 percent We love you for tuning in. See you later on this week. Getting my uh, my pitch down and the dreams. Are <laughs> gonna get my pitch down to start.